All right, we are live. Welcome, Vanguardians and buddies. My name is Jonathan S.P. Mindam here, and I have a very special guest today and a very special video. I am going to do an interview with the beautiful and the wonderful Miss Carol Ann Day, uh, and she is so gracious to come on to my stream and uh, uh, get to do a little time with me and do some questions, especially for you on behalf of the viewers. We're hopefully going to get to answer all your questions. Uh, but Miss Carol, I, why don't you just do a quick hello and uh, we'll we'll go from there. Sure. Um, hey, hello everybody. It's so good to see you. Hopefully everyone has uh, burning questions that they want answered. I am here to uh, push air out of my sound hole and answer the questions that you have burning at the forefront of your minds. Um, uh, welcome. Hey, let's uh, let's get her. Let's get her done. Wonderful. Excellent. Well, <laughs> Uh, Carol, I'm going to start at the bat. This is kind of geared towards your, um, your background. Like, how did you get into voice acting? Like what, um, what, like what led you to that path of getting involved with like the, I guess the behind the scenes of the voices and stuff like that? Yeah, sure. Um, really, a really good question. We get that one at conventions, um, basically every time. And it's a super good question. Um, basically, for me, I started off in uh, theater. So I come from a theater background. Um, when I was about 14, because I started voicing quite a long time ago, I was doing uh, volunteer children's theater. And uh, my director at the time happened to be working for this brand new studio here in town. And she thought I might like to audition. Um, so I did, and it's been downhill ever since. Do you, <laughs> uh, do, you, do you also still do like acting, or are you just doing strictly voice acting right now? I, I do other um, I do do other theater from time to time. I do uh, a little bit of dinner theater here oh, in yeah. town, <laughs> um, and then aside from that, right now it's mostly voice because I am in university full time as well. Okay, um, which kind of cuts your time down pretty viciously. Um, but yeah, I think it's really important to stay sort of plugged into the arts community, be creative in any way you can. So I do play music as well, which is super fun. What do you yeah. like to do as far as the music aspect? Like what instruments do you play or things like that? Um, I play the guitar and uh, I play the sitar really poorly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I, do, uh, I do write songs. I do sing as well. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about it. I, I did have a band. We're sort of on hiatus right now, but you can, uh, you can check them out if you'd like. Uh, Bellwether, uh, B-E-L-L-E-W-E-T-H-E-R. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so you you said theater. Like, what is? Uh, I'm a theater person. What uh, was your like your favorite like play or musical and things like that? Oh, how would you even pick? <laughs> um, like favorite that I've been in or favorite yeah, like, in the universe? Or, like, what that is exists? your favorite that you that you love and one that you would want to be in? Hmm. One of my one of my all time favorites, and this goes back probably a little over ten years ago. Um, was the Pirates of Penzance, which is an <laughs> operetta. Um, that one was super fun. I was just a, like a, a chorus, side chorus maiden. Um, but that was probably some of the most fun I've ever had in, in theater. Sure, sure, okay. I'm just what the, um, uh, I can't, wasn't there a movie that uh, mocked that a little bit, I think, Pirates of the Pen, uh, Penzium? Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> I, I, or that or yeah, Frasier. definitely had a live action version with uh, Kevin Klein, which was maybe pretty was, great. Maybe that was it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got involved. You started doing theater, like, so, and you were doing some voice acting. Like, uh, yeah. before, like, with the company you work for, is, is that, what is the name of that company? Is it, is it Bushy Road or is it, like? Uh, um, the basically, I, the company I work for is me. Okay. And I do a majority of my work through a studio called Blue Water, okay. which is sort of the sister company of the Ocean Group out of Vancouver. Okay. So, like, when you yeah. when you got like, how, did you just put your resume out there? Did you have to read lines? Like, how <laughs> basically how did you get to Bushy Road? How or how did you get to going into the Card Fight Vanguard area? Good question. Um, basically, um, when I auditioned initially. Um, which would have been about 15 years ago now, did a general audition and uh, then worked. And basically whenever a new show comes in, because basically Bushy Road would have come to Ocean okay. with the project and asked for it to be cast. And then we as the actors of the studio all popped in, got our sides, read the audition, and then they cast from there. 
Now, did you, um, like when you read, did you read for any other characters or was it just strictly for Misaki? They actually had me read only for Misaki this time. Okay. So, like, going into it, did you know what Cartwright and Vanguard was? I didn't. I didn't at the time. I actually am ashamed to admit that I, like, as far as trading card games go, mm -hmm. like, I knew a little bit about Pokemon and a little bit about, like, Magic the Gathering. Sure. Um, but aside from that, Card Fight Vanguard was kind of new for me. Okay, so I, I'm going to go back to this, but Pokemon, you mentioned that. Um, this is good for all the, the Poke fans out there. Do you have a favorite Pokemon? I love Jigglypuff. I think he's ah! so cute. <laughs> oh, you have one. <laughs> right there. Don't worry. <laughs> she's so cute. Yep, she's, she's back there. Don't you worry. So, oh, Carol, you just won my heart. Uh, <laughs> All right, well that's that's good to know about the Pokemon. Now I can I can tout that or uh, uh, blast that a little bit from the ceilings. Um, <laughs> so uh, when you got involved, when you were reading for Masaki and things, I mean, yeah. when you read, did you go then and watch it? Like, where is it like one of those things where it's like, oh, if I get it, I get it, and we'll go from there? Or did you like, okay, I'm gonna go and read for this character. I'm gonna go research a little bit about the show from I, the I always, standpoint. Like I always do a little bit of extra research. When I have to, um, a lot of stuff when it comes in, we don't necessarily have access to online. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time we get in there and we have to sign what's called an NDA, which is our non-disclosure agreement, sure. which basically means that the, the project is like a big secret. And if you tell anyone, they'll find you, they'll cut you and you'll be sad. <laughs> <laughs> but so we, we did that. And a lot of times, like you won't be able to access them until they've been officially released um with i think there was um i think check it out okay um when you um when you went in like when you were checking it out and, and doing everything mm -hmm. um and got to know the game and like like, was there ever just an interest to, like, actually learn the game or, like, at that point? Or are you, like, so far from, like, card games and things like that? Um, you want to know the actual truth. Um, the time that made me really want to start learning how to play the game was when uh, myself, actually, and my, my best buddy, Lucas, in 2012, went to the UK and met some of the fans. Sure. And upon meeting them at that time, immediately both of us were like, we need to learn how to play this game. <laughs> like everyone here is having such a good time. Like I, I must know. Sure. Um, I am. I am bad at it. <laughs> um, but it's fun. It's fun. So. <laughs> um. Now, when you get to like, when you like, obviously you get to read the character, or whatever, and 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 you get to be a part of that. Like, um. I mean, getting known Masaki as the character, like, is there like a sympathy towards her? Like, what do you think of her as a character overall? Like. I guess you know the backstory a, a little bit more than like most of us have watched on a daily basis because you read the lines, but like, what do you feel about her as a character overall? Uh, overall, uh, she has had probably one of the coolest builds I think I've seen. Because mm -hmm. um, initially when she started off, it was really, really fun because she's just, you know, very like and business and like I get to throw a little sarcasm in there, which is very me <laughs> which is great but then she did go through this like um huge process of sort of uh dealing with her own past and her own traumas and making friends being this like still very cool chick um but also with a lot of depth and i think anytime you voice a character this cool sort of thing happens where you like give them a little piece of yourself and kind of take a little piece of them for you Sure. Um, so yeah, I like I I love her. <laughs> what do you um What do you think of like the cards that she plays? Like like I mean like the clan she call she has O T T and she has what she's called. Yeah. Japanese. What do you think of just by the, I mean I guess maybe the names or by what you know of from reading it? What do you think of those cards? Like what do you think of those? We we call them units and things or, yeah, uh, yeah. or characters. But what do you think of those? Um, I've always been a big fan of the cards for this show. Mm -hmm. And this is like a purely superficial thing, but I think they're probably the prettiest trading card game cards, hands down, of any of them. Like, the pictures are absolutely gorgeous. Like, props to the artists. Um, I love Misaki's decks in that they're all really sort of, like, hard strategy-based. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's sort of like mental mathematics that you have to go through to play those decks effectively um, is really, really cool. Now, would those be decks you would want to really play, or would you go... Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, the first deck I think I built was great... Well, it was given to me, actually. It was a gift from a friend in uh, Manchester when we were there for the convention, so it's a great nature deck. Okay. Um, but I do... Uh, Bushy Road actually made me a working Genesis deck, so that's the one I've been playing for the last little while. I actually I just saw that in here that they... I guess there's a story behind that. Could you elaborate at all? I guess people said you had to learn the deck pretty fly on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> um, they basically gave us the decks because uh, I was there with Lucas again. So they gave me the Genesis deck and then they gave Lucas uh, basically Kai's deck. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we hadn't, like we were trying to sit down with the, the guys from Bushiro because I'm like, I've never played this deck before, man. I'm like, I know how to use my great natures and that's about it. And from the great nature deck I have from like three years ago, there, there's abilities these new cards have that I'm like, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, so they were really teaching us on the fly. We had to pull in other players from like the tournament. We're like, okay, just stand behind me, man, and tell me what how to move my cards. <laughs> so it was actually really fun. It was super interactive. So That's really yeah. funny. <laughs> um, so you got, you got to play a little bit, and you got to, I guess – get the feel for Masaki, I guess, from a real standpoint. Yeah. Um, so that's really exciting. Like, as a person who who admires the show a lot and has a great love and respect for it, knowing that you, I guess, forced to play it or, like, at least had a deck beforehand is really, it's really is exciting. Like, yeah. just because you now have a little more of an understanding. We as the fan base, I guess, have it. So that's really... No, you guys are actually amazing humans. <laughs> amazing humans. I don't understand how your brains work, but I am, like, enamored. <laughs> it's so cool. Like, I, I actually have had a couple of opportunities to actually watch people play in some of the big tournaments. And, like, you guys are, like, intense. Like, there's, no, there's no speaking, just, like, tapping of things. And I am, I am so impressed every time. <laughs> I think when, especially if you are watching from that caliber, we as the player base, like I know a lot of people who don't even watch the show and just play the game, but you, it is like, there comes a point where it goes like, everyone's super pumped at those events and they get really excited. And then like, I think it's the halfway part where they're just like, you know, like we have to win now. It's like, we're going yes. to war and battle. So yeah, absolutely. You're, you're not seeing the fun, fun part of it all. You are seeing a very intricate part, but yeah, you're not seeing like yeah. the beginning where they're like, stand up your Vanguard. You know, it's, it's a little bit different atmosphere as the day goes on. So No kidding. No kidding. Well, like, kudos to you guys. You were like, you impress me so much. You hear that, <laughs> We impress Carol Ann Day. I'm excited to hear that. So much. Uh, so I'm, I just got, I'm going to go. I just see a couple of questions here before we veer off so far that I can't get back to them. Um, sure. um, we'll answer a couple of these. These are kind of just based on. Um, we've got, we've asked about the main clan. What do you, uh, actually, um, mm. buddy fight. Yeah. You, you were working with obviously Bushy Road or, or the company yeah. you were, did they approach you for that? Or did you again have to re-audition for that? I definitely had to audition for that one. So um, was which, it something though where you were like, okay, I've already worked with them and it, it was just one of those natural like switchovers or did you want to do that? Or like what, what was your drive towards the buddy fight game or show? Um, I think it's really cool. It was an audition request request. So just sort of a standard, um, we're doing another show with these guys. So can you come in and read for it? Um, but there's also a sort of like excitement with that. Mm -hmm. Um, because you do get a chance to work with the same company, but do a voice that's completely out to left field. Cause you want to kind of make it, different from the one you did previously. So I was really excited actually when I got the sides for Paruko. Could you, I, I'm going to ask right now because I'm saying, could you just say something in that voice, please? Could you do a little something for that? Uh -huh. Buddy fight. <laughs> um, buddy fighters, come on over here. I talk really fast. Ugui Sugamachi. <laughs> it's like, um, she's a bit all over the place. So it's, you know, yeah. you've got Misaki and she's really low and kind of, sexy and she's got that sort of raw roughness and then Paruko who's like oh my goodness I am so happy all the time yeah you have like <laughs> legally blonde versus law and order like you have exactly like, you have <laughs> two shows about the law that are very very different <laughs> <laughs> um 
so when you went in and you got into that, I mean, obviously that show airs um, almost simultaneously with the Japanese release. I, I believe. Yeah. I mean, is that's new now? Like you know that that's never been done as yeah. far as the card game goes. What is? How does that affect your schedule compared to like? Uh, I mean, how how far in advance do you pre-record uh, those shows? Um, it's a good question. I always lose track, but we basically are recording all the time like all the time. So I think most shows you usually get like a week and a half, two weeks in advance, just in case somebody gets sick and you need to like reschedule. Um, but the, the schedule for, for buddy fight and for card fight are both really tight. So like when I, I, there was a while with the Vanguard show. I mean, they were doing the episodes. Um, I, you would get like three of them at a time and then they were yeah. like done. And then they were like a month later, we would finally get them again. And then they would do them sporadically. Like, so it's no longer that way? It's a lot more consistent? Uh, I think so. Again, like we're, we're one small part of a puzzle. And our, our studio, um, and we as the voice actors, don't really have much to do with when or how things are released. Sure. Okay. Um, so I don't think I could really speak to it with any authority. <laughs> Oh, that, that's absolutely fine. Um, yeah. When, like, for the show, which is really funny, is because, like, I don't know how, like, a contract works, but there was a season, the very end of the show, like, I don't know, again, if you've ever watched the Japanese one, but they had, like, this ultimate climax where Aichi was on the moon and all these things, yep. <laughs> and they kind of just were like, sorry, America, we're not doing that. Did you pre-record any of that stuff already, or were you guys just, like, completely, like, no? I... It was kind of an interesting thing because I think we had been, um, we were in the process of booking for it. Okay. Um, but uh, the uh, Bushiro basically decided to go a different direction before we had actually had anything recorded. Sure. Okay. I mean that makes sense. I mean we as the community were like, this is a huge like like you know like know. this is like leaving out yeah, like broke the, my heart a little bit too a little yeah, bit. The character <laughs> on there was really gonna really have like this moment in the sun like yeah. um it was definitely a shame because it, Masaki had one of the best storylines in that um a whole yeah. uh, final season so that's interesting. It's good to know that because we as the fans were like in an outcry because. The, yeah. that season introduced a huge mechanic that they're just like I, I definitely <laughs> I, I, I got a, I heard a little bit about it um, I heard a lot about it from fans sort of on my Facebook and on my Twitter um, but I get why Bushiro did it because to have that simultaneous release with the Japanese it's it's pretty good so yeah. I'll give them I'll give them props for that <laughs> Um, so once once that kind of happened, you went from like this whole series about locking, and you went about you know the invasion, and yeah. then there was obviously it was going into that point, but then they're like, no, we're gonna jump ahead. Like, how yeah. is you as an actor? You know, you still play older Masaki now. Like, yeah. how? Like, did what changed in your preparation for that? Like, did they say we want you to be older? Do we want you to be uh, like? I guess like, did your voice have to go deeper? Maybe not like. Um, like, how did they say to go about that, or how did you go about that? They uh, they actually really didn't give me too many notes on it um, at all. So I know sort of the character design did make her look a little bit older, but she's still quite young. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I think I've recorded her now only twice for the new series. Okay. Um, I'm stoked that she's still in the series. Yeah. It was like, take that, Kai. <laughs> um, um but uh yeah she's she's still pretty much the same misaki to me anyway now do you get to uh interact with the other um voice actors like do you get to like you've mentioned your friends uh like but like when you record is it just one of you in a little booth reading lines or is it a couple of you do you ever get to see the other actors because the guy who plays ren i i, right. I uh what's yeah. I Roger. he's like a Christian radio host and it blew my mind. Like I was just Oh, country radio. Country radio, that was it. And I just yeah. I was like, this is the face. Um, he is here. actually we, probably one of the coolest human beings you'll ever have a chance to meet. See, I and I wanna I wanna get to like actually do this with him a little bit because just when I found that out, I'm like I woo <laughs> Like he's just so opposite of anything that I, you know, we have this young evil like villain in season one where he's just so like world domination and 
and then you see him, it's completely opposite, you know? Like, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's just, it's just totally left field on that one. The sign of a good voice actor, hey? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's I mean, so except true. for me, because I am gorgeous and adorable. I, I, you're and gonna, anyone who says otherwise, I'll fight you. You're going to have like the whole, yep, I'm just seeing the whole <laughs> audience here just blow up. So, <laughs> Carol Senpai, notice me. Yeah, you got you got to let go. <laughs> um, uh, so, with um, with that, you, so do you get to work with them or do you get to see them at least? Or how, how is your interaction with them at all? Sure. So, for ADR, um, which is dialogue replacement, which is what we do for the most part with uh, any Japanese anime cartoon or um, French animation, Hungarian animation, whatever animation, if we're translating it into English, that's dubbing, and you do it alone. Okay. Um, there, there are uh, certain situations uh, where there's something that's called WALA. I'm not sure if you're familiar. It basically stands for With All Actors, and what that is okay. is crowd noise. So a lot of times like that, we'll get uh, two or three of us in the booth, Basically okay. filling in an entire stadium full of people. Okay. So <laughs> that can be pretty fun, but for the most part, um, with ADR, you are on your own. You get three beeps. You try and make it fit in the flaps as best you can. Um, there's another style of animation called prelay, okay. which is where the cartoons are drawn to fit your voice. And those are the situations where you see all of the actors in the room. Sure. Um, because because that's when you're you're building the cartoon from scratch. Yeah. Um, with ADR, it's always done solo. So you yeah. run into people in the booth sometimes if you have sort of similar schedules. But yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think the the last version you spoke about, I always remember as a kid, Robin Williams doing his stuff like for Aladdin, and they would draw to yeah. his voice or whatever. So I understand yeah. that art a little bit. So um, yeah. So that's favorite? that's prelay. Carolyn, could you do me a quick favor? Could you say hello to a Harrison Brown, please? Hello, he's, Harrison Brown. He's just going crazy in this chat. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and he just had a heart attack. So. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> he's going to pass out of uh, pure excitement here. So, um, so you, you, you've had like the, this experience with the card games and you've had this experience with Bushi road and things and yep. obviously have had you come out and do card fighting experiences. Is there any plans in the future? Have they asked you to do anything in the future to come out to these events or anything more? Um, as of right now, I don't have anything in the works with them. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have a convention coming up in June, June 13th in Lethbridge here in Alberta. Okay. Um, but as far as I know for the summer, that's, as far advanced as I have anything confirmed. Sure. Got it. Okay. That's good to know though. That really is. Um, I, I know many people like uh, there's actually a young man here asking if you're ever going to go to Malaysia anytime soon. Uh, so <laughs> if I had the opportunity to go to Malaysia, I would be on an airplane in a heartbeat. Like I don't even need to pack. Like I'll be there. <laughs> sure. Okay. Mohammed, I, they, she answered your question. She would be there in a heartbeat. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to get another one here with Sierra. You've been voice acting for a while. How do you evolve with changing voices or finding the right voice for a character? Do you try to change your voice to their personality or do you just go with it? And that is from Edward Leon. Edward, good question. Um, well, truthfully, I started voice acting. I think I got my first part in a cartoon when I was 14 years old. Um, so 14, 16 year old me did sound, I think, quite a bit different than 29 year old me now. Um, so, I mean, to adapt to a, a changing voice, um, your studio sort of gets to know you. Your demo does a lot in sort of showing what your range is at the time. And they can kind of tailor auditions to who they think you're capable of voicing well, I guess. Like I wouldn't receive an audition request for a 40 year old man. Because <laughs> I can't really do it so good, you know? Um, not like your Sammy. Of, like most of the time with auditions, what they send you is a little script with a picture at the top and sort of a written explanation of who the character is, what they're about, how old they are, and you can kind of take it in your experience to find a voice that you think would be right. Sure. And then you'll go in there, and chances are the director will be like, "Don't ever do that voice ever again." <laughs> uh, and then they direct you, and you do something else. 
Um, but it's all about playing, right? Um, and as the show goes on, I think you sort of um, adapt to the character a little bit and um, change the voice uh, with experience. I know, I feel like that's happened a lot with uh, Paruko and Buddy Fight. Like, um, they've given me a little bit more liberty to make her a little bit wackier, sure. <laughs> um, which, which is really fun for me. But even big shows like The Simpsons, you'll notice, um, the early voices sound nothing like the later ones. So you just sort of change and adapt with yourself and with the character. Sure. Yeah, and yeah. that's a very good a very good way to look at it because I think you as the the voice actress, like your your version of Masaki, like I like again, that's one of the reasons why I actually enjoyed the English show so much. Uh, especially in the first season. Like you were so mm -hmm. there was so much um character for you as a you know you to to go with mm -hmm. like it's just it was well it was very well done like it was like one of those things where it's like when you watch the japanese and you know one of the biggest things i think a lot of us are going to miss because they didn't do that final season was boss mm -hmm. late uh noki yeah <laughs> it, you know it was just, just good comedy there that we're not going to get to see which is really sad but yeah you've done a wonderful job of taking the character and and, and going with it so <laughs> Yeah, no, it's really cool, and it's cool to see the Japanese version as well. Like, I, I'm actually a huge fan of the Japanese uh, Misaki. Um, Have you ever met her, or, or? No, I haven't. Um, I will say my uh, my best bud, Lucas, did meet her at Anime Expo, I think, in 2012. A okay. little bit jealous. A little bit jealous. <laughs> um, but other time. <laughs> um, but no, I haven't had the chance to meet her. I've only... Um, I've only seen their version of the show, so um, she's really, really good. I think it's neat um, to sort of watch the Japanese along with the English dub, because I, I almost view them, like, my personal view is that they're, like, two completely different shows. I never compare the two. Yeah. Um, but I love the Japanese version for what it is, and I think uh, Izumi Kita does a wonderful job with the character. Wonderful. Thank. Well, I, I think across the, the line, you guys, you both get the honor of playing a really good character. So helps a lot. Really well written, beautiful animation in those shows. So it's a joy. <laughs> um, I have a couple of uh, again some stuff from the audience here. Um, they're begging for if you could say in Masaki's voice, Generation Stride. If you could do that, Ooh. please. <laughs> Generation Stride. Perfect. Is that good? Was that satisfying? Yeah, no, Are that, we good? I felt like Masaki was, I'm playing Masaki. Like, <laughs> 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 um, okay. And then if you could do, please, this, this young man again from Malaysia who asked if you were ever, if you could actually give a shout out to all Vanguard players in Malaysia. Malaysian Vanguard players, shout out. You guys are absolutely amazing. Love ya. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna get back to uh, this. Is, I'm trying to play catch up here. I don't want anyone's questions to go unnoticed, so I'm really sorry, guys. <laughs> sure. Um, because there are some, there are some good ones. There hasn't been the super creepy ones here yet. I thought we were gonna have a couple. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, they better yeah. be coming. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> super creepy questions. <laughs> we are accepting them. All right, if you, Lucas, and Brent were to get the opportunity, would you guys ever visit Anime Expo? I yes. think the guys down here at Bushy Road USA would love to have you all down here. You and guys need to go and let Bushy Road USA know that you want us, and we will be there. Now, Brett is Kai, right? Brett uh, Bauer? He's Leon. Brett, I, oh, Leon. Okay, sorry. And yeah. Lucas is? Morikawa. Morikawa. Okay. I, I'm, yeah. I'm only reading the first names here. They, oh, that's all good. I am here. Yeah. I'm here to help. Thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, let's see here. I'm going to go see if i got a few more here, and then we'll go back to my list of questions. What? Hashtag praise Carol Ann. <laughs> oh, John, here we go. Here's a crazy one, Carol. You're going to love okay. it. Okay, okay. John, Where's ask that? her to marry me. Do it if you would. Do it if you loved me, you would. Carol, are, <laughs> I guess the question here is, I, I'm going to just, are you single? <laughs> I am not single, All but, right. uh. <laughs> I mean, that's all right. It's hashtag Waifu Wednesday, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, we're going to get that trending, please. Hashtag Wednesday Waifu. <laughs> Thank Mary you for the... Oh. For asking, <laughs> like, I'm blushing a little bit here. I know you can't see because I'm so pale. Canada. <laughs> I am blushing a little. <laughs> Canada, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, okay, so do you know the name of the like some of the cards? Like someone just asked you, uh, asked. This is really funny. Date, marry, kill, Minerva, Amaterasu, Witch Coco. Do you know those cards? Yes, I do. Okay. Is it which one do I date? Which one do I marry? Which one do I kill? Yes. So okay. Minerva is the Genesis one. Yes. Amaterasu is obviously the main unit from yeah. season one, and then Witch Coco, the 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 beautiful redhead. She's fantastic. I think I would have to marry Amaterasu just because I feel like I bonded with her quite a lot in the first couple of seasons. Um, that's a tough call. I really, I really like Minerva, but she's got that weird owl thing. And I don't know if that's like a pet. Does she live in a forest? I don't know. Maybe we, maybe we kill her, but I actually like pulled her out of my deck because I, because I actually really like the character design. I actually did. I actually did. Look, 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 look. I pulled her out, I pulled her out of my deck. Um, I, do, I do really like her. Um, so I guess I would date. I would date the witch, and and kill Minerva. But I don't. I don't actually want to kill her. Who would the owl have then? Who would he have? He'd be so alone. I'm just gonna marry them all. Can I just marry them all? <laughs> You 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 uh, will do a Utah thing. We'll Mormon it up. <laughs> uh, um, so uh, what's here? Hold on, I got a I got a I got a couple more questions here. Okay. Oh, God, this is gonna be a really funny one. I'll save that one actually for a second here. Uh, that was, okay. When we get to the very end, I'll ask that one. That was just kind of an overall one. Um, sure. Guys, and she's already asked, kind of answered this. She hasn't technically been playing. She does have decks and things. She has played the game. Uh, she yeah. started with Great Nature, which, what did you think of those units? Like, what did you think of Great Nature? I, I actually really like them. Um, I loved, I love the design of them. I'm, uh, I'm a scholar myself, so I can dig, like, scholarly panda bears and things, because I'm a scholarly girl, and panda bears are pretty great. And, I mean, I already like cute things. Cute things are kind of a problem for me, like jiggly puffs and tiny owls that live in the forest and and panda bears that wear glasses like i, I think harry potter be. would you ever 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 be able to get a, a letter from hogwarts if the owl was bringing it <laughs> well you know i would let an owl bring me a letter that's a pretty impressive skill. <laughs> <laughs> you know what owl you've got that going on <laughs> okay <laughs> all right we, <laughs> um all right, so um, the played really well. The deck um, that was kind of made for me had uh, had it was just a really really well built deck. So I feel like I ruined Lucas with it a number of times <laughs> because Cable Sheep. Can I just say because Cable Sheep, perfect guards are my favorite. <laughs> we'll have to make sure we uh, when you next time if guys if you want your card signed, make sure you have a perfect guard from Genesis or OTT or Great Nature. There we go. <laughs> um, oh, boy. My question to start here. Uh, now, this, I guess this would be as your character, mm. Masaki. Right. They are going to do the Kill Mary date again. Ren, Kai, and Aichi. Who would you kill Mary and date out of those? I think I know this just based on your personality, but I could totally be mistaken. Okay, I think I would kill Aichi. Yes, okay, one, I'm one for one. <laughs> um, and then I think I would marry Kai, but okay. I would definitely date Ren on the side. Like, he would be my mistress. This that's red that's hair. Exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> that was funny, though. Okay. <laughs> um, do you have any buddy fight decks? Have you ever played buddy fight? I do. I have a Katana World deck. Oh. Um, but it's just a trial deck, so now I I really want a hero world deck. That's what I want, but I I haven't built one yet. Okay, so uh, there's a gentleman in this uh, thing. His name's t in here. His name's Tim Power Gamer. Okay, and, and she plays Con uh, Contana, so you'll be really cool. happy to hear that. He's uh, a big fan of that. Um, Perfect Guards win games. Uh, would you and Lucas ever consider making another card fight theater? It is in the works. Card fight mystery theater is in the works with a new something something probably coming this summer. Nice. Hear that, guys? That's going to be really exciting. 
Yeah, so I, Actually, if you haven't checked it out, uh, Lucas and I have a bunch of stuff up on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com backslash hermit sherpa. Nice. So those are some cartoons we made ourselves, and then you'll find all our card fight mystery theater stuff there as well. Good. Okay. I can't wait. That'll be really exciting. Um, uh, what is your favorite movie? Of all time ever? Uh, yeah, I guess that's what... What is your favorite movie? That is a hard question. Um, I, as a general rule, am a fiend for horror movies. Oh, okay. But one of my most favorite of all time, hands down, is The Wrong Guy with Dave Foley. I think it's one of the funnier movies made ever. Yeah, Dave is a fellow Canadian, correct? Yes, he is. All right. I, I, I think I know that movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, really, really funny movie. If you get a chance, watch it. Otherwise, uh, uh, I, I couldn't even pick. I couldn't even pick. Um, the The Last Man on Earth, starring Vincent Price. That's a, that's a pretty very good pretty one. fucking amazing. Oop. Yep. No, Pardon don't my worry. friend. Don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> We're all friends here. Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, a friend of mine, and this is the question I was going to ask, have you ever seen Anchorman 2? Uh, I have not seen Anchorman 2 yet. Oh, there, it's, in I, my, it's in my list of things to watch. Is it good? Is it worth watching? It's hysterical. It's hysterical. And you'll actually love it as a Canadian. There's a, a really good part about uh, the Canadian news team in there. So, okay. So you gotta, you're going to have to watch that. That'll be <laughs> definitely be worth it. For uh, sure. Now I'm reading all this. Nobody knows anything about the plan. Oh, it's, it's, they're bickering in the comments now about a state. Oh. Yeah, now now they're fighting for your love, Carol. Now you get to oh. watch them fight to the death. Don't so. fight for me. Don't fight for me. <laughs> fight for me. Keep fighting for me. Now, question. And this is actually a really good one, and I actually didn't think about this. Have they ever approached you or talked to you about doing the Card Fight Vanguard movie? Have there has been any interest? I mean, I, do you know that there was a movie in Japan and things like that? Uh, uh, Messiah, something Messiah. Yes. Is that right? Um, no. As far as I know, there are no plans to dub that one into English okay. that I am aware of. But again, um, we the voice actors kind of find out last after everyone. Sure. Okay. No, that's pretty, I mean, it's pretty, for even for us, they weren't even, like, talking about releasing it to certain areas yet, so it's just, like, yeah. one of the things where they're slowly getting to it, so. Uh, question here is, did you notice in the show the Miwa plus Masaki connection? Yes. The Masaki and Miwa <laughs> with dates. Um, that would, I think I was asked once what, who I would ship. Yeah. And that was my ship. I like Miwaki. Okay. I like that. Miwaki. <laughs> um, Miwa's actually always been one of my favorite uh, voices in the show since the very beginning. Sure. Um, good character. Um, but yes, I did. I did. Uh, they actually, I felt like in the last season that I dubbed, they had a lot of uh, interesting sexual tension. Because um, I know there was a bit between Aichi and Misaki at one point, and then a little Miwa and Misaki action. Um. That that would be I would yeah totally Miwa all the way Miwa Miwa, Miwa. Yeah. <laughs> all right Miwaki I like that they they she does ship it guys they they're they're saying they ship it so uh, there we go <laughs> I just had another one here and I'm gonna try to go back here uh, who do you enjoy voice acting more uh, Pakora or Masaki um I like them both for different reasons. Um, Misaki is really fun because she is so competent and smart and, uh, like, and sexy and cool and all of the above. Uh, and I love, I love Paruko because she is Paruko. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's loud and she's obnoxious and I get to shout, um, and I get to do weird voices too. And uh, I love that sort of melodrama. They're asking you. I, I love both. They're asking for you to say a swear as her. No. <laughs> I think they asked if you were letting the F-bomb drop. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's see. <laughs> they're, all, they're all lit up now here. Uh, are you a Star Wars fan? Uh, obviously. Yeah. That's I, a silly question. Next? No. 
<laughs> um, I do. I really, really like Star Wars. Um, I will admit uh, to being a bit more of a Trekkie. Oh, okay. Um, but I have I have full, unadulterated appreciation for Star Wars. Um, uh, Empire Strikes Back makes an excellent drinking game. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Dagobah, man. <laughs> Dagobah. <laughs> All right, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leon, we did we did talk about this. They did they don't film together a hundred percent. They do a lot of single uh, voicing. That uh, she's asked I think twice here, and I've been to vo looking back at it. So um, they do not film together. Uh, both voice acting and shows in general. Uh, man, this Gundams or Zoids? Oh, oh. Uh, no, I can't choose. I can't choose. You can't choose them. Um, or maybe the uh, Zoid. Like, Fiona from Zoids was my very first lead role in an anime ever. Um, so I was 15 when I voiced her. And then I got Alan B from G Gundam like a few months later and was sort of 16 when I finished dubbing Alan B. And those two shows were two of the coolest experiences I think I've ever had as an actor, like hands down. Mm -hmm. So I cannot, I cannot choose between the two. I cannot. Okay, guys. Sorry. You can't choose. Um, what man? More Star Wars questions. Are you hyped for the Force? <laughs> I don't even. Are, is there something on your page that I didn't notice about Star Wars? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I know you just saw uh, the Avengers the other day. I, I did. I saw the Avengers and I saw a beaver. So <laughs> it was a, I guess you could say it was probably the most important night of my life. <laughs> the beaver was a sign. It was a, it was a blessing. <laughs> um, what, Beavers are huge. They're so cool. <laughs> I, I guess we'll, we'll go to this question. Are you hyped for The Force Awakens? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it looks really, really cool. I love what they're doing with, like, cinematography, really, like, throwing it back to, like, old-school Star Wars. So, yeah. yes, I am thoroughly excited. Okay. I saw this one earlier, and I can't find it again, but I think it was just the question was, what is your favorite anime? That I've been in, or just I, in I general? I was looking, I couldn't find it, but maybe what is your favorite anime in general? Like, may, you don't even have to have acted or voiced for it. What is it just in general? I... Uh, that is, that's a really hard question. I think if I had to pick, like, a number one that I show people, um, it would probably be Death Note. Oh, okay. Um, so I have a little bit of a crush on Ryuk. I'm not going to lie. That voice is pretty amazing. I like apples, too. I'm just, like, throwing it out there. Maybe I, like, ship myself with, with Ryuk. That's, <laughs> like, that's how we do. Um, but I did just finish watching, uh, season one of Attack on Titan, which was really, really good. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, Kill the Kill, which I also really, really enjoyed. So. Oh yeah, you're gonna make a lot of people happy with this. Have yeah. you seen the, um, Have you seen the the live action version of um, uh, uh, Oh, I just lost my mind here. Uh, of Attack on the, Titan, like Attack on Titan one. Yeah, have you seen uh, it looks so so cool. So uh, cool. I'm not. I haven't seen the the whole thing yet, like the the anime yeah. or anything like that. But like definitely from the the previews, like it just screamed gonna be awesome <laughs> yeah no, the, it, I, I think i just saw like a trailer for it and it looks really really neat so uh here's another star wars question i'm so sorry <laughs> on the streets or sith in the sheets <laughs> say that but basically would you be a sith or a jedi i guess maybe they're trying to hook you up with the the, the disney reps here <laughs> I, I don't know i think probably a sith I feel like I, I went evil at some point in my life, so I'm just going to have to, like, go Sith. <laughs> I don't know what a Sith is like in, in the sheets. I feel like that'd be a really dangerous love match. <laughs> well, they have uh, that's an interesting question. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I feel like we're going to get, like, eight more Star Wars questions. Guys, this is Vanguard. <laughs> this is... Um... <laughs> I know, man, some of these questions are just getting, they're not even on topic anymore. Uh, okay. Can you tell us if we will see Misaki play again in Card Fight Vanguard G? Um, as far as I know right now, I, I have no idea. 
Um, I'm in for some recording tomorrow, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't tell you guys. Okay. I think it's a lot of, it's a lot of Chrono, a lot of Aichi, a lot of Tokura. That's her name, right? Tokura? No, you say Aichi. Tokoha. Tokoha. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> the currents, you're going to just see people flip their lids, right? Yeah, if that was the case. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, it's a lot of those, like, they're the new main characters, so I don't know how much, um, I don't know how much card fighting I'll be doing in the new series, yeah. as Misaki, anyway. I voice a lot of small brown-haired boys <laughs> in the show. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you have more... I, no, I'm not joking. If you watch back, like, the first episode of Vanguard G, I'm pretty sure I'm, like, three brown-haired kids in that show. Really? Oh, you're not credited. <laughs> <laughs> I credited myself. <laughs> yeah. Wait, everyone, I'm going to go back and watch this. I'm like, that's Carol Andy! You'll have to. You'll have to go back. I, uh, I, do, <laughs> I think that's been most of my recording sessions lately. I've been filling in random girls and little boys. <laughs> you're the extra yeah. voice characters. Um, yes. do you, have you had the pleasure of meeting the girl who plays Tokura? Um, yes, I actually just ran into her at the studio, uh, maybe a week or two ago. She seems is, very nice. Is she, now, is it she younger or is she older? Yes. Like, okay, She's because I remember reading somewhere that she was, uh, it sounded like she was younger based on what they were saying. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think of her character now that there's another, like, female lead in the show? What do you think of her overall, like, now that there's a little bit more feminism to the show? Um, I think it's I think it's really cool. I'm always a big fan of female leads and especially well written female leads. And I think Bushiro does a really good job of that. So I need you to hook me up with her. Um, and I don't mean dating. Uh, <laughs> I, I Tokura is my favorite from the show, so I'd love to to get a chance to speak to her like we're doing today. So. <laughs> sure, uh, sure. How do you feel? How do you feel about Misaki for Kamui ditching work several times? How do I feel about Kamui ditching work? Yeah, how did how That's do you feel as Masaki, Kamui ditching work several times? Well, I don't think that's really acceptable. Do you? I oh. don't think so. I think if you have a job, you should be respectful. And I think if Misaki's your boss, you probably should tread lightly. <laughs> that's a very good way of putting it. <laughs> Just very, saying. Yeah, yeah. You, you could be the boss, it sounds like, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> have you met... <laughs> Aichi's voice actor. I have not. Um, he's actually, I don't believe he's from Calgary. I think he's one of our Edmonton crew. And that was really funny because I was doing the research and I couldn't believe that I, that the whole crew, uh, or for the most part, was from Canada. Um, mm -hmm. That they do everything up there. And that's uh, yeah. uh, really unique because I was expecting to see, like, you know, maybe one Kai or something like that, but it, it was not. You're all from Canada, which is really cool. So. Yeah. Canada wins this one. <laughs> Canada wins all of them. <laughs> you do have good maple syrup, so we do have good. We have we have and, and beavers roaming the streets. So <laughs> coming out of nowhere. So <laughs> get your beaver great nature cards out. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, is there a Shin-like character in your life who you constantly have to nag? Hmm. I don't think so. You know, I'm actually surrounded by a lot of really awesome people who don't require a ton of nagging. Um, should I like, no, off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone I need to nag. Okay. I think maybe other people need to nag me <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I'm not shin. <laughs> um, have you accidentally used one of your character's voices in every yeah yeah all the time all the time so I, like I don't even that? know what my own voice is anymore I walk around <laughs> doing character voices all the time it's really irritating <laughs> for other people I'm sure um, but sometimes a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do yep Oh, I, <laughs> Is that, um, I mean, I've got, I've got 15 years worth of voices uh, yeah. taking up a lot of room up here. <laughs> they do slip out quite a lot. I don't, I don't know. What is your favorite voice? Like, My what favorite, is your favorite voice? voice? It doesn't even have to be Vanguard. What is your favorite overall character 
voice that you've ever done or like what it what's the one you just like I'm doing it <laughs> I could not pick a favorite I have so many for so many different occasions um I feel like I uh I did a, a robot character at one point called Pell in a show called Scan to Go mm-hmm. and that sort of like um I throw in quite a lot which is irritating <laughs> um my deep manly man impression, which I do a lot of as well. Um, but I, it really depends on the situation. Like there are times when I will drop into Misaki for no reason. There are moments when I'm seeing concerts where I'm screaming as like Paruko. It just, um, like, like I said earlier, like every character is sort of a shade of me and it's like a give and take. So sure. mm-hmm. I'm a big weirdo, I guess. So, now, this is a really good question. I didn't think of this one. This is from uh, Dark Paladin Duelist. He says, how do you feel about your work on Vanguard and Buddy Fight only being seen online for the most part? Now, they are, I think, starting to air the show in Canada, which is makes sense now. Uh, How do you you feel about that? Um, I actually think it's really, really cool that Bushy Road does stream them online. Um, Because as, I mean, the world... The world that we have today is very sort of like technologically driven Mm -hmm. and a YouTube is a free medium for the most part. So I think it makes the shows really, really accessible to people who may not necessarily have cable or, um, you know, um, anyone who might not, like, it's just, it's a really, it's a really accessible sort of forum to, um, to access cartoons. And I think that's really quite cool. Um, so like I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> no, it's it's definitely um, – it's easier for me to watch the show on YouTube and things like that rather yeah. than TV. I get, I get maybe where the question is you don't have a younger audience because the show is not on TV, and I guess maybe it's harder for kids to watch the show. But, I mean, like, you as a person – I mean, like, when your fans come up to you, like, when you go to a, an event and things, uh, say, yeah. like, a YouTube road event, like, obviously, is it the age group is probably – uh, teenage boys and up yep. like you have, a, you have a lot of like you, like there's a b- young young um card player i can't remember her name she's from canada um she actually has done very well in the card tournaments here but i mean like she's oh, a young little girl um good for her and, yeah she's i think she took like 10th place or 9th place at not Nashville. bad yeah, girl she's power great. yeah and she's one of the very few card players uh i think her name's Kristen. Uh, it's gonna kill me now um, but like, what is your audience like? What, like when, like your overall age group or demographics, when people are around you, like, what do you see the most? Um, it's pretty diverse. You know, I will say, um, according to like my stats on Facebook, I think it's sort of males between 18 and 30 years old is mm-hmm. the majority, but I've been to card tournaments where I've seen, um, an older crowd of people and I've seen a lot of younger players as well. Sort of the like seven to 10 year old crowd. Um, so it's, it's pretty diverse. We need more females in there though. I was just going to ask it's I, my call more women. We need more <laughs> female card players. And especially with someone being Masaki in the show, who's a very strong character. Absolutely. It done, right. It, it, we can get female players. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, I think, I think, I think we definitely need more, more, more female players out um, there. You know, and it's funny when we talk about like female characters. Like you, you're one of your biggest rivals on the show as a voice, uh, Akasa, uh, who plays yep. Pale Moon, like that. D- yeah. Like, d- have you ever uh, got to meet with her and anything like that? The character that plays her. I have actually never met her. So it's completely separate. Uh, see, I'd love for you to. It's all like it's really schedule dependent. So I always find like you'll end up running into the same four or five people all the time. Yeah. Um, and then sort of missing the fringes. Like I, I see Brett quite often. Um, Brendan Hunter, I know quite well, Lucas. Um, and then, you know, other, other random people as well. But I, I haven't seen, I have not seen her, unfortunately. Now this, this is actually, uh, what do you think of like her units, the circus, the, 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 the pale moon, the, the, the funny- I, I've always been a fan of things that are a little bit darker again, Sith, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, so actually, comes- the Moon units are really scary and really cool. I don't yeah. know how the I don't know how the actual clan plays, but uh, the units themselves are really really neat. 
It's one of the most expensive clans, that's for sure. So, um, <laughs> what are the chances of? Oh, I, have you seen that they've created actual like hologram uh, tables for Vanguard now? Like, are creating and they're in the process. Like when the I have not off. seen this. I think yeah. that's really cool. They're I'm all about creating. science. So Go holographic tables. Yes, more, <laughs> more holograms, more science. <laughs> Promoting school, we love it. She's the scholar. Um, <laughs> would you, would you, as your character, like they've done this kind of like with Dan Green and things in the past, play a match, you know, showcasing the uh, the the technology and things? Would you do something like that? Yep. Okay, Bushira, we need. Yeah, to get I can't promise I would play game. well, but I mean, if there's a holographic table involved, I'm in. Here's what I want. Here's 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 my demands, Bushira. I want Caroline Day versus the character who plays Takara. Playing on a hologram table, please. <laughs> Let's get those good units out there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, I think we're. I, I got a couple more here, Carol. I don't sure. want to take too much more of your time. Yeah. Um, the, I say some of these are. I'm like I'm waiting for the Star Wars ones, but now they're talking about the table, so I got to get away from okay. that. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any personal stories? about um uh about the card fight vanguard that you you could share with us like about you, you, something that you've done with the card fight vanguard you know dubbing or you know like your i guess your best moment in the vanguard world like what is something that you have enjoyed and same thing for buddy fight that i've enjoyed like or um, in general like something that you were like you know what i i did this i did that i loved it this is my best memory of it so or of the game or of the show that's a good question. Like I, I always have, I think my, my fondest memories of anything are always conventions. Um, I don't know how many people are on my fan page, but say that like interacting with the fans is probably my most favorite part uh, of anything. Um, as far as the actual show goes, I had a ton of fun because I voice uh, a character called Mai Tobita mm -hmm. in Card Fight as well, uh, who's Emmy's like best bud. Yeah. And I had a few moments with her where I got to pull out my, like, childhood Sailor Moon voice, which was, like, uh, which was really, really fun. Um, uh, like, all the incidentals, which are those little boys and those random lady characters are all actually really, really fun. Uh, really fun to do. Um, but most, like, I think my most favorite part um, of having been involved with the uh, card fight and buddy fight is actually just, uh, doing things like this and meeting the fans and going to conventions and getting the chance to like interact with you guys. Yeah, and we appreciate it. Oh. By, by far. You, <laughs> you, I, it's it's one of those things where it's again like having someone like you who we consider like a celebrity. Like you know, like I'm, I'm sure you, the, you made your life earlier, guys. When I got to talk to her a little bit, she just made it so like so passe. Like oh, I go to school and all this. It's like your voice, Masaki. <laughs> Like, you're, you're, I've been very fortunate. I think I actually have probably the coolest job on the face of the earth. So, in your face. Yeah, and you can do other theater and things. You know, that's really exciting. Like, I, I was going to ask you, do you do murder mysteries or anything like that? Yeah. So yeah, that's what I do. I got to ask, does the butler, does the butler do it? <laughs> it always... You know what? I, uh, I think I've been doing murder mysteries now for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And the butler has not done it once. Yes! But once per show, <laughs> somebody guesses that the butler did it. Yeah, we get a bad we rap. Read it, we're like, guys, there wasn't even a butler in the show. I don't, I don't know where you're getting this. Butlers are good people. Hard workers. <laughs> I, that's my new uh, intro for my shows right now. <laughs> there you go. We're good people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, absolutely. I, okay, so guys, we're going to wrap it up here. We've been doing this for an hour. I do want to say, if you have any final questions, please uh, ask them now before I let, I, I have a, a, a one or two more questions for you. These are kind of like the fun closing ones. Uh, yeah. One, have you, uh, would you have any interest ever coming on back onto a live stream and uh, playing Cards Against Humanity with a group of us? Just uh, yes. Fun. Okay, so do I need to have the cards? Because I no, played the game, but I don't have any cards. For, there's an app for it and everything. We we do it all. We well, that's just, good. No, I was actually talking to another another uh, friend of mine on my fan page about that. So yeah, let's definitely do that. Okay, let's definitely we'll, do it. We'll work something out in the future. There, that's absolutely a fun one. We we've been trying to figure this out, and we want to create like this like 
get people in here with the community, and I think that'd be a fun, yeah. fun way to do that. Um, my next yeah, question, fun. sorry. Um, uh, my next question actually comes back to is like, with you as a you as a person, and you get to do all this stuff, and you get to have the ability to um, uh, to kind of take on these characters and things. What is a future like a project that you would want to work on? Um, you know, whether it be like a movie or whether it be like a, a TV show or whether it be again, like something like, oh, gosh. like what is the thing um, you want to strive for next? Like what's, where does Carol and Day want to go next? That's a really interesting question. You know, I would really, I would really love to keep doing what I'm, what I'm doing. I, I love, I love voicing things. Um, I am currently working on, uh, with, uh, Lucas Gilbertson as well on making our own sort of weird cartoons. Yeah. Um, so producing, animating ourselves, voicing ourselves in a blanket fort in my living room, which is pretty amazing. So, um, you know, uh, just like, I, I love being involved in the industry. I love playing, I love playing strong female characters. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just like, I'll roll with the punches, take it as it comes. Good. All right. I got a couple more here. Um, this is coming in. One, they asked if we get Lucas to play Cards Against Humanity with us. And then... Yeah, well, obviously I will get him to do that, too. <laughs> and if given the chance, would you work on Digimon Adventure Tree? Try. Try. Again. Yes. Sure. Absolutely. Put me in Digimon. Absolutely. You, well, who is your favorite Digimon character, Ben? Do you know that one at all? I don't know Digimon very well. I'm going to confess that. I don't know it too well. Just do what I do, Jigglypuff. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever cosplayed as any of your characters? I have not. I have not ever cosplayed, um, I don't think at all. Um, I uh -huh. usually... Um, usually when I go and I'm, I'm guesting at a convention, I try and mostly go as myself. Um, so I think it's important sort of to, for me, it's like, I'm, I'm going as myself. I am not my characters. I'm me. I'm a part of my characters, but, uh, I love seeing people cosplaying as my characters. That's like one of my most favorite things on the face of the earth. Yeah. Um, but I haven't personally done it. No, but I mean, who knows? Who knows? One day. <laughs> Down the line, we'll see you dressed as Masaki somewhere in that big old. Like, <laughs> Never know. Like thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how many times did you rewatch Flame of Rekka? <laughs> um, I have rewatched like the first half of it, I think, once so far since I picked it up. Okay. Is that Joe? I no, that is well. <laughs> you see, you see, Fudu Five D Synchro. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, um, Flame of Rekka is actually a really cool show. I haven't seen it since I dubbed it about. 10 or 12 years ago and it just got re-released so um still need to work my way through it it's a bit of a longer one all right and guys she she's already answered she has nothing lined up right now with bushi road other than an anime convention that's separate uh that'll be taking place in canada itself um, and it's one day june 13th if y'all want to drive up from the states i, I was highly <laughs> just gonna say if you could please plug that so awesome we're, we're definitely gonna look for you there and if anyone's going, we got to get her to sign your perfect guards and your great nature unit, Beaver. Um, yeah, your faces too, backpacks, shirts, <laughs> decolletage. I'll write my name on anything. I, I really will. In reason. You got a pen. <laughs> um, I, I says, which is your favorite of Masaki's avatars? Which we kind of talked about, you know, CEO. Uh, yeah. Uh, Minerva, um, Amaterasu, uh, Sikiomi was, uh, I don't think we actually talked about that one, but is there a favorite uh, out of all the cards that you have uh, uh, from Masaki's uh, lineup? One that's better than the I other? Loved, I really liked all of her avatars. Again, like, I mean, I felt like Amaterasu was her, was her trump card for quite a while, and so I, I grew quite fondly attached to that one. Um, but I do really like Minerva. I think the character design for Minerva is really gorgeous, so... Yeah, the owl, it's up there. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your favorite quote from one of your roles? What is your, I guess, maybe favorite line, I guess, would be the, from one of your... I don't know if I can remember a specific line. You know, the one line that I remember from uh, Cardfight is actually not even mine. It's It's one of Lucas's, like... 
I caught a huge fish. And that happens to be the one that sticks in my head um, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. There's, there's lots of good ones. Uh, I feel like she told people to be quiet a lot. Um, but I don't know if I could, like, pick a specific, yeah, a specific a line. That's a tough one. Um, I'll remember, okay. I remember, like, I remember with my hime, um, yelling kagutsuchi a lot, and that word was really hard to pronounce, so that one has stuck with me for the last, like, ten years. Uh, now here's a, this is kind of a deep one, actually. Uh, has anything ever happened during your dubbing career that you wish you could change? Hmm. No. Um, just the thing with, with acting and I guess with any industry that you're involved with for a long period of time is you're going to do stuff. Um, like I look back at stuff that I dubbed when I was 14 and I go, that's acting. Um, but then I look at it and I'm like, you know what, that that's actually just a snapshot in time. They're like beautiful snapshots in time. And it, it allows you to grow sort of, um, as a person and sort of build, build your career from there. So I don't, I don't really, I don't really have any regrets, just a lot of fond, but very weird memories. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think we're going to wrap up here, guys. I, I really appreciate um, you all asking these great questions and um, yes. I really appreciate Carol for uh, you coming on and, and getting a chance to get to meet you and get to see you, I guess, from that human standpoint, um, uh, on a on a bigger level here, and um, really th appreciate you coming on and doing this for us. And obviously, you guys just found out she'll be coming out again. We'll be playing Cards Against Humanity with uh, uh, her and Lucas if we can get them. <laughs> yeah. um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think you know something like that where you get to you uh, we'll pick we'll pick a crazy person. You know, you'll have them in there, and then we'll have the rest of us <laughs> completely. <laughs> Um, but we, we, we look forward to future, uh, uh endeavors and, and things like that. But, uh, thank you so much, Carol, and, uh, really appreciate this tremendously. And, um, uh, you've been actually tr a treasure and a uh, joy to have on here today. So it's definitely unique to see, just get to, you know, see that again, you're so human, like, <laughs> just like, I oh, try I really hard to be a human most of the time. I'm actually a robot in disguise, so I'm, I'm really pleased that I've fooled you. I was going to say, to be that perfect, I guess you would have to be. So <laughs> uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so, so much, uh, everybody, for all your questions, and thank you, Jonathan, for inviting me to do this. It's been, it's been super cool and really, really fun, so cheers. Thank you so much. Again, everyone, thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Comment, uh, like this video, and again, tell us what you want to see in the future. But also, look at Humanity with Carol Ann Day. It's going to be really exciting. So thank you again, everyone. Have a great night.